What's up, guys? Welcome back to the next part of our streaming tutorial. My name is Guktex. My name is Lewis, aka Opcast. So today, uh, we are going to be giving you guys a demo on how to get your first XSplit stream up and running. Yep. Uh, XSplit's a very simple program to use. Uh, you want to go to, I guess, just Google search XSplit. You'll probably be the first one. You'll have to sign up for a, uh, an account, so your email address, everything like that. And XSplit is not free. Um, there is a free version, but it's severely limited. So what you'll have to do is either get a personal license or a premium license. Uh, I would highly recommend getting um, a premium license. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and usually they, they always have sales this deals. This is the cost of doing business. I mean, if you guys wanted to go the absolute cheapest route, then you would use OBS. Yes. But, uh, you know, streaming can be either like super poverty or, you know, you can <laughs> put a lot into it. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to assume that if you're watching this, it's because you either already bought XSplit or you're thinking about or it. Or you're like, man, this free software, I can't yeah, stand it. I can't stand it. Um, all right, so let's take a look at... Uh, minor technical difficulty. Oh, all right, there we go. All right, we're back. Okay. So this is the X split window. And you'll notice that each... You know, there's 12 scenes, and each scene is basically a different uh, shot that you could switch to. So for example, you could have your webcam on scene one, and then your game feed on scene two, and then a video that you're gonna play during your break as scene three, and then scene four is like sponsor, um, like sponsor slides, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, or even just like your social media links. Mm -hmm. um, so, Basically, this area right here is going to be listing the scene sources that you add. You can add them via here. You can add, you know, there's different options and stuff like that. For this one, we're just going to be working with camera and screen region. Uh, you can remove them, and then when you add sources, they all have their specific settings. Uh, this here is your microphone input. So what XSplit considers your microphone is like um, things you either put into line in or mic in, or let's say like a headset. Mm -hmm. Those are all considered mics. This here is considered your system sounds. So that could be like if you're playing Spotify in the background, you're watching a YouTube video. Or it could also be the dings of Windows. Yes, the k k k or all this stuff. Um, so that's where the system sounds comes from. Uh, so basically up here we have, uh, you know, you, they basically can uh, call these presentations. So you can save a custom one and then save a different one. So that it would save the the cameras loaded, the, the sources loaded in each scene, as well as the position in the media files. Yeah. Um, and then you can add stuff through file. Uh, so view here, resolution. Now XSplit, I think it defaults when you first install it to uh, 640 by 360. So that basically not only controls the size of your window here, but also uh, what resolution you're going to be outputting when you stream. So for simplicity's sake, I would just recommend, you know, go to 720. If your machine can't handle 720, then you're going to want to, you know, go to 640 by 360. And uh, scale viewport here basically controls the size of, uh, you know, the XSplit window. So you can set it to something that's a little more manageable on your screen. Like maybe you have like a game going on here or you want it like really small in the background. And this also affects the CPU too. So the smaller you have it, the less CPU you're taking up. Um, frame rate, frame rate is basically the frame rate of the video. So, you know, you can have something looking silky smooth at 60 FPS, or maybe you don't have the best computer and you have to set it to 25 FPS. Uh, personally, if your computer can handle it, I would say leave it at 30 FPS always. You don't ever need to really go higher unless you're really trying to be fancy. Um, and if you're going lower than 25 FPS, then you shouldn't be streaming with this computer. Um, transitions, just fancy stuff to, from scene to scene, there's, um, you know, different transitions you can use. You can have fades, fans. I honestly just leave it to none because I'm just fine with nice quick cuts. Uh, projector is a premium feature. Uh, what it does is it lets you output whatever's going on in XSplit to a separate monitor if you have another monitor hooked up. So this is useful. Let's say, you know, you're at a tournament 
and you're broadcasting it, you can send a feed to the commentators to talk about it, or you can send the feed to the projector so people can watch a match. So it's got a, it's got a lot of uses. I or mean, you could take the HDMI out of one computer and plug it into the capture card of another computer. Yes, you could, and you could you know record that with a separate computer. Um, broadcast, this is where you're gonna set up your stream, and uh, we'll, we'll cover this in more detail a little bit later. Um, announce is just, you know, you can set it to tweet that your channel is live. Um, and over here, activate delay server. Now, let's say you're a StarCraft player and you're in a tournament and you don't want people to cheat by watching what's going on on your site. You can use that to delay when the video feed gets sent to the stream. It's not used too often, but if you want to. Uh, My Recordings takes you to your recordings folder. Uh, XSplit can actually record um, what's ever going on in the program as a, as a video file. And that's something we'll talk about in another video because that can get pretty in-depth. Now, general settings, um, just to give you a bit quick overview, this disable arrow theme, when you uncheck this, you can see that it kind of changes your you know, windows. Honestly, I always leave disable arrow theme unchecked. Um, some people disable arrow to clear up more CPU uh, resources, but honestly, I don't really find that it makes a difference, and I feel XSplit works a little bit better with arrow enabled. Um, enable virtual cam output. Basically, you can make um, XSplit, like it says, a virtual camera, so you can send an XSplit feed to Skype, you can send it to like Google Hangouts, you can send it to another encoder. If XSplit encoder isn't working out well to you, you can send it to OBS or FFSplit. So that's basically what virtual camera output does. Enable game source. When you enable game source, this is also a premium feature. Um, basically, XSplit can hook on to a game speed. So like, let's say you're playing Diablo and instead of screen capping it like people used to do, it'll hook into the Diablo game feed and you can be like a camera source. Um, hide from screen region. This is actually something <laughs> I learned today. So uh, when, you're, when you're capturing a screen region, a lot of times, like if you put your XSplit window into it, it'll pop up. So if you click that, um, basically it stops, uh, it stops your XSplit from showing up in your screen capture. So that's, uh, that's super useful for that. And um, enable Skype interaction. So what this does is like, let's say you're having a podcast with your friends and you wanna be able to get their video feeds on the screen, you enable that and uh, you can pull from Skype the actual video feeds. And uh, enable optimized render. It says experimental, so you should not mess with it and leave it unchecked. Uh, finally, audio. So when you have um, a headset or you're using the line in on your computer or microphone in or, or whatever audio you got going in, you can use that to select, you can select that XSplit as the mic and that, that's represented here. This is what the microphone is. Um, so it, it's, it's good to be able to switch between that because sometimes computers have a lot of different audio sources. Like it can be your webcam, it can be the monitor, it can be tons of stuff. Uh, use Windows XP sound. I don't, I don't ever use this. Um, if you're having audio issues, you can try and use it, but for the most part, it does cause a delay, an audio delay sometimes. And this audio delay is basically used for syncing audio. So sometimes you have a webcam that's a little bit behind your audio, so you can set a delay so that they sync up better or a lot of people use this when they use the USB 2.0 capture cards. They, um, they use it so they have a webcam and the delayed feed and they use it to sync all that audio together. Uh, finally, silence detection, you're not gonna really use that at all. You can select where your local recordings are and uh, yeah, that's pretty much um, the general options. Now let's talk about actually setting up our scenes. Okay, so now we're gonna actually get a video feed from our webcam. So we have our Logitech C920 webcam hooked up via USB 2.0. So we're gonna add it as a camera. So you see right here in the pull down, we see the Logitech camera. So let's click on that. And let's go ahead and make this bigger. Now there's two ways to do this. You can do it manually by dragging or you can just highlight over it, press one to full screen it. Um, now you can see that it's basically like an SD resolution. It's got, you know, it's in 4.3, it's cut off. So you're like, you know, like I've got this at 720. How do I make it full screen? Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna go highlight over your source. You're gonna right click it. You're gonna go to cam, configure and video output. 
And you can see here it's set to 480 basically. And this camera is capable of up to 720. So now we've got that. Okay. And there you go. Now you're full screen on the camera. Um, now this camera actually has some little bit more advanced features to set up stuff. So what you do is you go to configure, you go to video input. And if you installed your, your drivers, you basically have this option. So let's go ahead and move this over here. Let's move this over here. So right now you have autofocus. I have it unchecked, but if you check it, basically the camera always tries to focus you. Now this might seem cool, but it's kind of glitchy. It depends on the environment. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's like a low light environment, it could be like focusing in and out, and that could look very annoying. Yeah, so when you're cam whoring and, you know, <laughs> late at night, you know, <laughs> you don't necessarily want to use autofocus all the time. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to miss... At least from my experience, cam whoring. You don't, you don't want to like miss that money shot, right? Right, yes. <laughs> and have it all blurred out. So. I know, all for nothing. You're going to have to save it up again. So right here, you can adjust the focus. Now you can see we're out of focus, and now we're in focus. And then under more advanced settings, you can, um, right light basically tries to get the exposure right so you get brightness up there. So what I like to do is I like to click on right light and then I like to unclick it and then just check if everything looks good. Because what can happen is, is if you, if, if you leave right light on, especially in low light stuff, it tries to bump the exposure up. So let's mm -hmm. uncheck this. So if you put the exposure super high, you can see now we're all choppy. So if we, you know, check right light back on, it corrects itself. Now we're smooth. And then I just uncheck that so that right light doesn't try and trip out anymore. Anyway, so when that's done, just save it. And now we have our... Now we have scene one. Yes. Uh, which you could also, you know, you can click right there, rename it if you want. Yeah, um, so let me get that. So webcam. Oh, all right. Okay, so we got scene one. Now uh, for scene two, let's say that we were going to screen cap because uh, you know we don't have our uh, capture card hooked up yet. Yeah, so let's say we wanted to screen cap a game. So right here we got Winnie the Pooh. Japanese Winnie the Pooh. Japanese Winnie the Pooh. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to add, add screen region and just, yeah, I mean, you'll probably be more accurate with this than I am, but just for demo's sake, do that. And actually, let's see. Because you can see X, but it's popping up into our screen region. Apply there. <laughs> and there you go, now it's off. So now you can do this. We'll just manually resize it right here. Oops. So right here, you can see that um, because of the screen region we got, it's not, you know, filling up the whole, the whole scene. So one option you can do is you can go to settings and layout and uncheck keep aspect ratio and it'll stretch it out. But as you mentioned, there's actually good uses for this, right? Yeah, if you, uh, you know, pull the screen back to the left, now you have this big empty screen uh, on the screen real estate on the right that you could use for things like putting your lo your channel's logo or your Twitter uh, name or you know a link to your site or any other kind of pertinent information. Uh, so you could either use uh, a graphic, you could either use like let's say a PNG on the right hand side of the screen, or you could just use the built-in fe uh, text features of XSplit. Um, Either one of them would work. Uh, yeah, so imagine if uh, the graphic on the right was formatted specifically for it, then you guys would be able to see how that was used. Yeah, you could put, you know, Twitter, social media. Yeah, um, so that, you know, you just sometimes have to be creative with uh, your screen real estate if the resolutions of the sources sometimes just don't match up. Uh, so now uh, we would be able to switch between uh, scene one and scene two, and you'll notice <laughs> you'll notice that since we have our transitions set to none, that nothing happens. But you know, just to demo it, if you want to give it the real, um, 
you know, like a super, <laughs> yeah. like a super 80s music video. Yeah. And you could play around with those. Um, but anyway, so now we have uh, two scenes. So now if we were going to be hosting our Winnie the Pooh live stream, we would, you know, open it up and be like, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to our Winnie the Pooh live stream. Now we're going to switch to Winnie the Pooh and now we're going to play some yeah. games. Uh, but let's say that, you know, our third scene, we wanted it to be like, uh, you know, our social media channels, right? Or yeah. maybe like a still image. Yeah. Or an image uh, or uh, a video. Yeah. And we could drop that in there. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's really, I mean, we could outlay every use you can, but this is kind of like the experimentation part of streaming where you can figure mm -hmm. out ways to make your broadcast more engaging. And honestly, it's probably the funnest part of streaming is doing that. It's like, how can I make this cooler? How can I make this different? Right. Um, but yeah, that's that's a basic overview of all the features of XSplit as a program and how to add your, add your uh, video feeds to it. Right, and so once you got all this stuff set up, and set up your channels, then you would just hit the button and you would go live. But we'll get into all of those settings because uh, there's, you know, there's additional XSplit configuration stuff that you, yeah. if you really wanted to delve into the meat of XSplit, it's all there. Uh, yeah. But at least now you have your scene set up. Yeah, so the next subject will be actually configuring XSplit to send out a stable video feed that's watchable by your audience. Awesome. So sit tight for that. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.